The basics are not overrated and are here to stay for one major reason. They work. Plain and simple. So instead of overcomplicating your training and constantly searching for new, optimal exercises, why not embrace long-term progressive overload on timeless compounds? And no, this doesn't necessarily mean lifting heavy or going through strength phases. I'm talking about getting stronger with moderate to high reps, say between six to 20, and being patient with the gains because it takes time to build muscle in the first place. See, there's a lot of influencers trying to steer you away from the basics when you probably need them the most right now. Just consider the fact that 90% of lifters are still novices and remain that way for years despite novel methods constantly coming out, and you start to see why perfection may not be the answer. Of course, we want to maximize our program and knowledge is potential power, but if that process leads to paralysis by analysis or even worse, program hopping, did it really serve you? In my opinion, we must start by eliminating confusion, and the best way to do this is by sticking to time-proven training since it's simple to understand and pretty much guarantees results through consistent efforts. That said, some may chime in and claim that the basics didn't work for me. But upon further investigation, I've almost always found these lifters to be very weak with low standards. Not only mentally because they confuse slow gains for plateaus, but also in their performance. For example, if you're doing a touch and go bench with two plates for one all out grinder, it makes sense why your upper body isn't that impressive. Like as much as this may be many people's goals and it does feel great to hit for the first time, the truth is, this is literally base strength that pretty much every man who isn't debilitated can hit. It's the starting foundation that one should reach, which means there's significantly more progress ahead. I'm talking easily five to 10 more years if you're willing to put in the proper work. Like, you want info that actually needs to be heard? This is it. You are capable of so much more. It's about time you realize that instead of appealing to weak gym bros to make yourself feel better. So I'm tired of all these excuses. And let's keep it real. You're not some special snowflake that won't grow from increasing his 3x10 weight by 50 to 100 pounds, especially on high stability movements with excellent loading potential and range of motion. There's a reason why. People still do these exercises almost 100 years after the creation. It's not just culture. Hype can only keep a lift popular for so long. So turn your one rep max into a 10 to 15 rep max and tell me if the basics don't work. Now regarding lower body, if you're deadlifting three plates for a single, it's honestly not enough for a posterior chain. Raise it to at least four for multiple reps. Heck, even get your good mornings to one times body weight for clean reps, as that will blow up those spinal rectors. For upper body, get your OHB to a late novice's bench numbers and you'll have some serious cannibal action. Same goes for back training. If you can't dumbbell row at least 100 pounds or barbell row somewhere in the 200s, why are you surprised of not having a yoke? It's not like I'm providing psychotic, unrealistic numbers here. Everything I'm talking about today can be achieved. I should also mention that this whole obsession with stimulus to fatigue only really matters to those who at least entered the intermediate stage. So when I tell people not to do endless volume on conventional deadlifts or chest supported rows, it's because they're pulling in the fours and fives and need to be more mindful of blending. But a beginner doesn't have the same problem. This goes for squat training too. Doing ATG reps in the high 200s or low threes shouldn't wreck you like it would a competitive powerlifter. So why are you then lowering priority on effective hip hinges and knee flexions when bad recovery was never an issue to begin with? On top of that, what if I told you that achieving a three plate squat and four plate deadlift for reps would probably satisfy most of your leg aesthetic goals? Even though strength and mass potential is higher, aesthetics and being balanced in your body should still be reached with such basic standards. So many of you may actually choose to maintain even though you had more gains to make. Yet it didn't take long to get to this point, nor would training ever have to be complicated again plus to save the opportunity cost of wasting time. It's like when guys buy a starter camera for a grand and realize it more than met their needs, as opposed to spending three to four grand right off the bat and investing weeks and months of researching for the best of the best equipment. Oftentimes when you get in the trenches, you realize you never needed more, which means that most people who contemplate are not actually doing, because if they were, results would kick in before confusion, basically. You can refine the details 
after you've established yourself. Bake the cake first and ice it later if needed. Now, another common excuse out here is that this exercise is not suited for math optometry, which may be valid in some cases, but is rarely ever justified in beginners. Like, you know when I finally confirmed I wasn't built to deadlift? The moment I hit the intermediate stage. Before that, there were speculations, but even then, progress was fine and lower back wasn't an issue despite being horrifically bent forward. And by the time I got to the 385, which is when linear progression sees, I was already somewhat ascetic, which is also when I confirmed deadlifts were my worst lift out of the big three. But in the end, that didn't matter. And that's what I'm trying to stress to you. Who cares if you're disadvantaged? In fact, I can flip the script and say this is better for hypertrophy since you can get more out of less weight naturally. So for all you long arm benchers, do you realize your way of pressing is unmatched for chest and triceps growth? You get a deeper stretch at the bottom with a greater extension of the arm, which explains why there's less torso down to lifters in the six feet plus gang. So for gaining mass, this is probably better. Now, if you're gonna say, well, Alex, it's also more stressful on the joints, then my counter argument would be that you can always use variations of the compounds, which you're now eligible for since you got so much strong. In other words, the movement patterns are valid, but variations that are similar enough are perfectly fine substitutes. Like doing SSB squats instead of back squats, trap bar deads over conventional, and Swiss bar benching instead of regular benching, because that neutral grip feels great on the shoulders. So if you're going to claim that barbells are restrictive, then you're living in a black and white bubble and completely miss the boat. Because there's endless ways to mix up the classics that don't involve gimmicks. So you either know this or are deliberately omitting information. Now, this will lead me on to another discussion, which has to do with creating problems that don't exist. For example, in recent times, you've likely heard that traditional vertical poles like lat pull downs and pull ups aren't the ideal way of developing the lats due to the orientation of the arm and direction of resistance. It's been proposed that a more diagonal angle while keeping a neutral grip is number one, which is actually correct. However, it's also important to recognize that an exercise just needs to be biased enough for growth which means that simple modifications are super easy to employ with basic movements. Like if I'm doing neutral grip ring pull-ups, I can maximize my pulling ROM given the free motion while keeping the elbows tight to the body and leaning back more, which will provide an insane sensation in the lats such that it feels like they're freaking tearing off. And coincidentally, many calisthenics athletes have already been doing this for years and have a proven track record of building phenomenal V tapers to the point where even bar only versions with a wider inferior grip still builds a wide back. Heck, remember Leroy Colbert? He always claimed that old school bodybuilders built their lats with the least lat bias pull up version. Yet the end results were still magnificent. So just to say, there's more going on here and pretty much everyone who gets strong enough at pull ups won't have a lagging back. So was this ever a problem to begin with? Just how optimal do we need to be with our exercise selection? I believe that the small sliding scale of efficiency and most of the basic compounds are probably very close to the end because at large, calisthenics athletes are never lacking in the width department. In the real world, results tend to play out differently than one would otherwise expect on paper. You'll often hear, oh, these exercises aren't all that great for hypertrophy, but then you see most of the best naturals who got big from them. Finally, I want to discuss performance and how the people who focus on the basics can pretty much handle anything as conventional training yields the highest transference to any form of weight training. Simply put, if the tissues hypertrophied enough from these restrictive subpar movements, it would still be realistic to walk into any gym and put up numbers and form that even biomechanics experts would be proud of. Because let's keep it real, a stable, hypertrophy-focused exercise isn't really all that skillful. And if you're already muscular, proficiency will be high. And it's not because of specificity. General strength usually correlates with overall hypertrophy. And the sooner we understand that, which the research is constantly confirming, the better off everyone is going to be. So to reference myself here, as an elite bencher, I can max out most chess machines from day one. And if it's play loaded, I guarantee you'll witness rarely seen loads, even though I don't do presses in a converging manner. Same goes for lifting extremely heavy dumbbells, well over 120, even though 90% of my training is bilateral based. Therefore, all this talk about missing out on the squeeze and not fully leveraging the rib cage 
doesn't matter so much since the tissues already hypertrophied enough to perform those functions under high stress conditions. So if you manage to automatically hit this point, doesn't it also prove that you never needed these fancy exercises to begin with? Sure, it can be fun to mix in, especially for seasoned lifters, but regardless, you still got to the final destination without doing any of that stuff. And very likely in the exact same time frame. All you really did was filter out that which was unnecessary and got hyper-focused with classic motions that have built the bodies of all pre-drug bodybuilders. And I find that pretty cool. So with that said, guys, most of you would benefit more from embracing the basics since doing so will fulfill most physique goals without overcomplicating things. Remember, you can always fine tune later, but for now, please focus on the bigger picture. With that said, I'm done talking for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this segment. Let me know what your experience has been with time-proven exercises, and I'll talk to you all next time.